magician. We have to find somebody who understood a different kind of magic. And I said, yeah. He said, well, that took us six months. Both Rose Gladden was alive then and Wynne Kent was alive then. Dee was out searching, but they are very, very hard to come by. But he managed to find a guy in North London who understood all this. He was what we call a scholar. A scholar is somebody who goes to universities who had studied, who's learned. So not only was he Jewish, but he has also learned about the Quran, the Bible, and something else. He's learned all the languages, he spoke all the languages and understood it all. And he has dealt with this form of magic for years, but a very quiet man, didn't talk about it. So that is why it took so long to find him. He came out. At the time, I couldn't go out to help out. I can't remember why I couldn't go, but I couldn't go. So it ended up with that Bob Course went and Bob in the house, and then Bob's wife, Sue, they all went out and had to help out with this that now had to happen. This is what he tells me. He said, well, we found this guy. He was strange, but never mind, he came. And he said he came and he put on a rope, he said, and then he opened up first the Bible, then the Quran, then another book. And there he laid it all. And then what he did, he went out there and he did a pentagram on the floor. And this pentagram, we had to have candles in the pentagram. And that was all done and light and candles was done. And then he stood up and he turned around and he looked at Sue and he said to Sue, you are the one that has to guide the light. So if the light in the candles go out, you have now got a lighter and you have to light them. Isn't that you do that? Then he looked at Bob Course and he said, and you Bob, you have to be the wind keeper. As soon as the wind start, I want you to say these words. I want you to continuously keep on saying it. And if Sue can help you, she can say them too, but you have to completely keep on saying them. So he got a, a piece of paper and he looked at the words and he went, okay. Those two didn't think any more about this, what was gonna happen. So on came all the lights, was all lit. And then this gentleman started with, first of all, chapters from the Bible, which was in Hebrew, and he started to talk. And as he started to talk, every candle that was lit blew out totally. So there was Sue on all her four hands, litting all the candle, literally litting them. The wind came in. There was Bob Kors calming the wind, trying for them not to blow out the candles, saying these words, and where this gentleman carried on in Hebrew, then into the the uh, the, uh, the Quran, then into his own words. This apparently, I was told, went on for almost an hour. They were all sweating. They was all running around. He was almost dead, he said. But suddenly all the light came on still. The wind laid itself and the man who has dealt with this took his throat off, took all his book, put it in his bag, everything in and stood there and he just said, it has been done. And he just turned around and he said, you, sir, who went in prison, he didn't know that, you brought it in. And he left. That story I didn't hear for nearly 30 years. And I said to Bob, I said, Bob, I said, who on earth was this man? And he said, we don't know, we can't find him. He disappeared. We have no idea where he is. So it was interesting for my part of meeting Rose Glatton about her healing, about her exorcism, understanding exorcism, 
been part of what I, I myself have to be involved in many years ago just to learn. And then 30 years later, only hearing the outcome of this story. This is me and Rose Gladden, and I'm glad to share this with you because it has one thing that we don't do often, that is share knowledge, to learn from each other, to go out there to help each other, but also bring other things in to spiritualism, uh, understand there is other ways of living. Uh, I have it on, on this, what I'm doing here now, the shamanic people, the healers, the homeopaths, we'll get everything. It works as one. This is the most fantastic thing. If you want to learn more about Rose Gladden, you can actually find her on my own homepage, which is www.mariandampier.jeans, I think I'm Marian Dampier Jeans, dot com. I'm sure that uh, you can go in there and you can read about Rose Gladden, the things and stories. So this is a way that I, as a medium, has learned. So this is learning or teaching me, I have to say, about good, bad and healing. But there's always a point in every medium's life where you have to learn by somebody else. And that knowledge becomes bigger and bigger. And you continuously keep on learning. You completely, completely go in circles where you are being introduced by spirit of people that has to learn, that has to understand. Things are not always as it seems and everything is not of spirit. I think I would like to stop it there because it's not always about spirit. So thank you, Mayan. Nice to hear about how you met Rose Gladden. I think it must have been a very extraordinary uh, meeting with her. And I know that you have known her for many years. And uh, as you said in, uh, on your Facebook, no, not in your Facebook, on your website, myondampergenes.com, uh, you can go, our listener and viewers can go in and read about uh, Rose Gladden too. And uh, what I was thinking during this uh, meeting with you today, Marian, that you had planned a, a lot of others, other broadcasts uh, with some other interesting people. Uh, Bo, how many minutes do we have left right now? As long as you want. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Mayan, could you tell the viewers and listeners maybe uh, who do you want to invite for the next um, broadcast? I mean, I have got many people I know that can contribute to my work, to the work of spirit in many, many directions. Uh, I have got a, a girlfriend called Sue Parker who is a homeopath today, but started the spiritual route with me some 50 years ago, uh, where we both sat in the same circle. We went to the same spiritualist church, but where I carried on with the mediumship, she carried on with her healing and then become a fantastic homeopath and also bark remedy. Uh, so she has more gone into that side of life, which I think is fantastic. Still, we can share with each other. So that's one I would like one day to come with us in. It would also be very interesting for people in Denmark to meet some, some presidents from churches that has run spiritualist churches. What and how is a church run? What is it we are doing in there? Uh, how is a service? How is a committee? How do you set up? What is it? Because Denmark don't have its churches and it's not run on the same things. We have three services a week uh, in, in our spiritual church. So they would be interesting to get people in to talk about that. So, so I'm literally looking for that. Uh, so we're starting to sort of spread spiritualism, if you like, into different uh, categories. I would also like to have in to Denmark because that's where I come from in Norway. We have the Vikings. Who are the Vikings? Uh, did they do trance work? Did they understand spiritualism? Uh, what is it? So we have, of course, invited in, is it Völving, she's called? Völve, yes, Völve. 
<laughs> Vølve. Victoria. <Ja>. Victoria. <laughs> Gudrunden. <laughs> uh, she's a fantastic. I worked with her before. So I like to invite her in to have a conversation with her on the Viking time and maybe how the spirit comes in and some of the things that we have worked together, I have seen her sitting. I will explain when we're talking about it because of the physical part of her own mediumship and her trance work and, and things like that. So that would become absolutely fascinating to bring her in also. So we have now got Sue Parker, we have got um, Rose, no, Rose Gladden, we just done her, we, we got uh, Gurun. So we're still looking to see who else we can bring in. Who else is there, darling? Uh, yes, we have talked about your friend, your Danish friend, uh, Jay Bauer, or Jude Bauer. She's living yes, in, in the UK. Yes, right. yes. Jude is, uh, is a minister uh, in Great Britain, but she's a minister in, I think it is the Corinthian she's the minister in. Uh, we have uh, got various different sectors within spiritualism. We have it from... Uh, the National Spiritual Union to the Greater World, and then we've got the Corinthian, which is another one. And I think that that's where uh, Yuda is uh, a minister. And it would be interesting for her point of view to talk about her church, as she is uh, a member of, which is in south of England, uh, which is towards Brighton, that kind of way down there. Um, she's a fantastic person to listen to. She's also a medium. I want to see how that the people down there has welcomed her in as a Dane because I have worked many years in London as one of the first Danish people who's worked openly on the platform. So that would be very interesting with her. So we have invited her and she has said yes to. I have to say, everything we're talking about here, they all said yes. It's yeah. just find the time and dates when we can all fit them in and what we can learn from it. And I think that the world can learn from what we know about this you know, from Vikings to homeopathy to bark remedy to all sorts of things to ministers from Denmark that has settled down in England for some years. Uh, yeah. And who else have we got? Do we know? Yes, we know, Marianne. Uh, you have been sitting with Leslie Flint for many I've years ago. Flint. And there's a, a gentleman called Carl who has helped us with uh, your website. And... Uh, we will invite Carl too. Isn't that right, Maya? That's right. Carl is somebody I have known within the spiritualist movement because we know the same people. And of course, he wrote a book upon Lisa Flint and I have helped him with Lisa Flint and the many stories in which I was involved in the Lisa Flint. So I'm also in his books with my stories. So that would be interesting because Leslie Flint was one of the, I think, one of the best mediums in the world ever. And we will never have one like that again. Unfortunately, something that actually Leslie told me, he said, the day I pass over, you will not see another one like me. Uh, and it's true. I have never seen any physical medium, independent voice medium, sitting and letting spirit taken over. But what you don't understand about Leslie Flint, he was awake when it happened. It doesn't happen very often that anybody is awake. In trance, you're not really awake. You're partly in, partly out. Leslie Flint had voices in the air, sometimes up to two at the time. And that was fascinating. So that is good. Yeah, so we'll get, uh, get uh, Carl in. And today we have contacted your old friend, sorry, old, but your friend, uh, Paul Arndale, isn't that right? The producer from TV2, the Danish broadcast television number two. And he had uh, uh, confirmed that he would like to make uh, uh, a, a, an appointment with you too. Who, who is he? Paul Arndale, I have known many, many years. He's also a writer, but he's also a TV producer. And uh, when he started to get involved with some of the uh, uh, documentaries in Denmark, in which we did call... One of them was A Feeling for Murder, which is, a, I think it's a Danish uh, thing made first. Uh, and also Spirit Returns. So I did the program and I always felt with Paul more at ease to work with him. And I could be dead honest with Paul of the things in which I saw and felt and done and the way that we worked together because there was this inner trust that he understood what spiritualism was all about. For me, it was very important in those days, doing the films, that you don't work with a TV crew who's negative 
or a producer who don't bloody understand the question that has to be asked or understand the medium that you're working with. So Paul Arndale was a fantastic, or still is a fantastic person for me, who did a lot of research and did very good filming. So that would be fantastic. And of course, his wife, Lotte, Charlotte, key enough, her name is, was the one who wrote my first book. And that book took Denmark with Storm, straight on. It was sold out. We had, she bought a whole car with, it, with the royalties, I have to say. It just sold like hotcakes in Denmark. Because at that time, nobody has really written very good books upon spiritualism. So she took it up and she followed me around. She came over to England and she interviewed me. So it was a book, and I was told many of times by people who read my first book, uh, My Life with Spirit, that they were sitting on the bus or a train, and they were sitting there reading my book, ah, laughing to themselves, and totally forgot to get off the bus or the bloody train, and then up four stations further down, and had to bloody well come back again because they forgot to get off. So I thought that was really fantastic, and I had people, children who, who wrote to me via the parents and saying, oh, I'm only 10 years of age and I can understand your book. Yes. What has Marian always said? Don't make things complicated. Write and talk. Simple. So everybody can understand. All these long words, forget it. I don't understand it. And my dyslexia do not allow me to talk like that or even write like that. So she understood. And she wrote the way that I spoke. She didn't hide the way I spoke, the way my feelings came in. That's why that book became so successful as what it is. And when you're talking about your books, Marian, you have also in September, October, you, uh, the, the last book came out in with is, with is in Danish at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, e Tismans Tjeneste, and we are working, hopefully, our yeah. good friend Diana is hopefully getting it translated into to English. So, uh, it means well, the, it excuse means me? the service of spirit. Excuse me? It means the service of spirit. It yes. Means the service of spirit. Yeah. Yes, it does. Mayan, I know that you all also does those Zoom meetings in Danish where yes. we are participants to Bo and I, and I'm very grateful to, to, to do this with you. And uh, I was thinking we had planned a guided meditation on Monday, the 18th of January. Uh, it's, well, uh, all the places are booked. There are no more room. I think it's about 100 on Zoom that uh, Monday coming up. Uh, would you like to do a guided meditation in, in English too that we can, can broadcast do, here? I can do that too. If I said, I want to do two at, in the same time, I have to say, I want to cut it off in two, if you like it, because it, I always remember the first time, we go back again 50 years when I first time ever made a guided tour. Nobody understood this, but I had a special way of getting them into the other side of life to see what was happening. So I like to open the doors again. So we can do that little meditation and then we give it a couple of minutes just to get calmed down and so they'll take you on a different tour into it and the other way a lot of people have done over my time so it is to to to, to do two in for that and then maybe after that one make an open discussion what he saw or maybe how did he feel and did he understand it or, or, or giving people a chance to talk about it the way that you attune the spirit or set yourself in, in the mind of attunement. I think that that is where the guide sort of comes in and let you visualize things and be able to see things in which you can use later on within your study of the spirit communication. So you are saying that people who are attending this uh, guided meditation, there's a possibility to meet their guided spirit or their companion in yeah. the spirit world. Okay, that's very, very interesting. It's a, it's, it's a way, and I have to say my guided tour is not just guided, it was told to me by spirit how to do it. And it is like trying to open people's imagination. Let your imagination run wild because we can help you to steer that one. 
and what you see and why you're doing it because there's hidden things in this tours I'm taking there's hidden understanding why we do it and I will understand that when you start telling me what you see and what you hear so yeah I think that we should make a broadcast too about how to do a guided meditation how to learn about it mind that would maybe be a subject too yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's putting as many subjects out as easy as possible. There's no magical cure to this. It's called work. It's called learning, sitting, take time, finding about yourself, learning about yourself. It is not a weekend course in anything. It is a long term one. As I said, with this broadcasting here, I had no idea that was something called bad. I had to learn that. I had to go through the doors into be taught by Rose Gladden what this is all about. And if your mind open yourself up of the possibility out there, you will always find spirit coming to aid and help you. It's like I know that uh, Bo would like to sit in a physical circle in Yulan. I said to Bo, send your thought out. Spirit will help you. They will send people to you. They will send things to you. It is often you hear spirit in a physical circle say, but why didn't you ask? Simple as that. Why didn't you ask? There's no more magic to that. But this broadcast has almost been magic, Mayan. You're telling about uh, Rose <laughs> and the story with Bob and Bob and, and those terrible things that you have. Oh, well, terrible. But I, I think it was very... Well, for you, much to learn in one or one day. Um, I would like to ask Bo. I know Bo that you have worked about uh, a new uh, YouTube channel. Yes, it's a work in progress. But um, these first, uh, this is uh, number four in 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 the row of uh, of small shows with Marin. Um, and we're putting it out on, on, on a separate channel on YouTube, so it could be texted in uh, other languages than English. This is uh, no the Nordic countries and Romanian and so forth. So Romania, are, Romania, yeah. So people all over can can understand what you're saying. And in German too, maybe. Yeah, also German, Spanish. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, great. So, so everybody can find Mayan's uh, YouTube channel on YouTube, and yeah. it's called what it's called. Marian Dampadines International. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, I think that uh, the time has run out, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much again, Mayan, for doing this with us, and uh, I hope to see you soon, and we will broadcast again. All the new broad broadcasts will be put up on your Facebook, International, or on your website, or on uh, whatever you have on social media uh, all around. Maybe your uh, Instagram too. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Yes. So see you again soon. Bye. Bye. And bye, 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 and thank you very much indeed. <laughs> You're welcome. Welcome. Bye bye. <laughs>